Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Video Number 3. We will look at fixed point iterations. So we were given an equation f of x equal to 0 to solve. Now we rewrite it into a different but equivalent form such that x equals to g of x for some function of g. We first remark that this can always be achieved and there are many ways of doing it. Say for example if I take this equation and simply add x on both sides so I will have x equals to fx plus x and then I can treat the right hand side as my function g of x and there are many other ways of doing it. So however we'll see later that the choice of your g makes a big difference in the convergence. Now here is some terminology. So if you have a root for f, f of r equals to 0, and then this is equivalent so that you have r equals to g at r, then this value r here is called a fixed point for this function g because if g takes the value r and it returns the same value r. Okay, so let's first um, illustrate the main idea. The main idea is the following. Let's say you made some initial guess. Let's say x bar. Um, hopefully it's a good guess. And then um, if your function gx is nice, which we will define later on, you'll know what it means. And then hopefully um, if you compute g at x bar since x equals to gx um, is what you want to solve and you hope that g evaluated x bar should be closer to the root than the x bar. And if that's the case, then we can iterate and hopefully get closer and closer to the root for f. Okay, so the iteration algorithm actually is quite simple. So you choose a starting point, call it x0, and then you do the iterations, and in each iteration you simply plug in xk into the function g and evaluate it, and that value will be your xk plus 1. And then you just keep going until you have some stop criterion that's met. Okay, let's look at some possible stop criteria. Let's say epsilon is the tolerance. So one natural way will be um, checking between the two iterations, are my two values very close to each other? If they are, then that means I'm very close to the fixed point. So this quantity here, the absolute value between xk and xk minus 1, less than epsilon, is a good choice. And second, as we have seen before, you should always put in a maximum number of iteration to be reached as um, one of the criteria. Okay, and you can combine the abo above two in any way you like. Now let's take a look at some examples and see this fixed point iteration in action. Our first example is um, a very simple function f of x simply equals to x minus cosine of x and we want to find the root and I require four digits of accuracy. Here we see there is an, an obvious choice for the fixed point um, function that is um, the original equation now is e equivalent to x equal to cosine x so I can choose my g to be cosine of x. So let's say we have x0 equals to 1 as our initial guess. Then we can do the iterations. The iteration becomes xk plus 1 equals to cosine of xk. Okay, so putting in x0 and cosine of x0 gives me x1, which is this value. And then if I put in x1 into cosine, I evaluate, and it gives me 
this value 0 0.8576 and that's my x2 and I can keep doing it one more time and obtain x3 by computing cosine of x2 and I get 0 0.6543 and let's say I kept doing it to 23 times and then x23 I computed 0 0.7390 and this can be done by just hitting your calculator actually many many times and one more iteration x24 and now I get 7391 I see I'm getting close because now I know the first three digits are accurate because my two iterations only differ in the fourth digit. And I did one more iteration, x25, and I find out that x25 equals to x24. The first four digits are the same. Then I say that I can stop here because I know for sure they are accurate. So you conclude that our approximation to the root with four digit accuracy is 0 0.7391. So in this example we see that the fixed point iteration works quite well even though it took many iterations. So remember this number, the number of iteration is 25 for this problem. And later on we'll learn some other method which requires a much smaller number. Our second example, it's kind of a silly function. So let's say f of x equal to e to the negative 2x times x minus 1 equals to 0. So trivially, we see that the root r equals to 1 because when x equals to 1, this guy is 0 and that is a root. So the point is to um, use this as a case study and set up a fixed point iteration and then we'll see if it converges to 1 or not. Okay, So we rewrite it in the way mm, that was suggested. So x equals to gx. gx simply will be f of x plus x. Now since we know r equals to 1 is a root, we are kind of in a cheating mode. So let's make an initial guess really, really nice, very close, 0 0.99. So hopefully it shall converge pretty fast. Or does it? Well, let's perform some iterations. Okay, so plug in x0, evaluate g at that, I get x1, I see I get 0 0.9886. Whoops, it's going a little bit away from the root. One more iteration, I go to 0 0.9870, it's still going away. The third iteration gives me 0 0.9852, it's still going away. So I kept doing it, and let's say I did 27 iterations, I get this number, 0 0.1655. I'm getting desperate. I think something's not working. However, I tried one more iteration, I get negative 0 0.43. And even one more, I get negative 3.8. I think it's not working. And this means we call it, it diverges. So I stop. So what went wrong? Why this example didn't work? Well, we'll talk about this in the next video.